energy conservation programs and measures that they've undertaken at home. Mr. Speaker, we are taking actions to ensure electricity rates remain stable, and we are lowering greenhouse gas and mercury emissions as well. So we are undertaking an energy transformation uh, in this province, and we want to stop relying on costly, uncertain supplies of imported coal to generate our electricity. And you know, we have some very good alternatives. We have a wealth of natural resources in this province from our water, from our air, and from our lands. And just a few short years ago, coal accounted for roughly 75% of our electricity generation. And we now cut that figure down to approximately 65% uh, through the use of cleaner burning natural gas and also through the uh, addition of uh, various renewables, as I mentioned. By 2020, 40% of our electricity will come from sources like wind, hydro, tidal, and biomass. Another 20% could come from uh, natural gas, especially if prices uh, remain low or remain uh, competitive. Right now they're in the, the $4 range or slightly thereover. So that makes our energy situation uh, more secure. It helps keep electricity costs in check and it builds our local economies. Last year, our wind power capacity in the province uh, more than doubled. We now have 160 uh, wind turbines uh, able to deliver power to the grid. And certainly in the area of the province where I come from, there are two large wind farms uh, on Dalhousie Mountain and uh, also the uh, Shearwind uh, uh, project uh, in eastern Pictou County. So, Mr. Speaker, we're taking a balanced approach to our energy needs here in Nova Scotia. We want an electricity system that works for all Nova Scotia residents and for every income level. Nova Scotians don't want to pay more for their power if they don't have to. So we expect Nova Scotia Power to uh, look long and hard at their proposed electricity uh, uh, rates, to um, sharpen their pencil, to uh, uh, decrease or uh, reduce any uh, uh, costs they have, or even to eliminate some. We encourage Nova Scotia Power and, uh, and stakeholders to work long and hard at this as well. We also believe the time has come for the federal government to end the practice of charging HST on uh, one of the most important necessities of life, uh, our electricity. Uh -huh. That move alone would uh, save approximately 5% on electricity rates and would help uh, offset any increase that's uh, being proposed. So, Mr. Speaker, in uh, closing, I just uh, want to mention our government will uh, join uh, with the consumer advocate uh, and others to ensure that any proposals uh, put forward by Nova Scotia Power for rate increases get uh, fully scrutinized uh, by, in the public hearing process. And we would encourage uh, any and all interested parties and uh, all Nova Scotians uh, to do the same. The UARB has the mandate to set electricity rates in Nova Scotia. And it is up to all of us to ensure that we voice our concerns and ask the right questions. However, we feel strongly, uh, Mr. Speaker, that it is not the role of government to be setting electricity rates, nor conducting uh, an audit of Nova Scotia power operations, uh, as the honorable member that spoke previously uh, had mentioned. We believe in full accountability on rates, and we believe that the UARB has full authority to scrutinize costs and require anything that would uh, be covered by an audit. So again, Mr. Speaker, I just want to uh, thank the Honourable Member opposite uh, for bringing up the discussion and for this opportunity to uh, share our government's views on this topic. Thank you. Good minister. The Honourable Member for Kings West. Hans West. My apology, Hans West. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and that's just fine. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, rise this evening for a few minutes and speak to uh, a resolution that uh, I certainly support and believe in. I want to thank the Honourable uh, Member uh, for bringing it forward. I want to thank the Minister for that, some, uh, uh, that wonderfully written speech by uh, whoever wrote it. And I can tell you that it had absolutely nothing to do with what we're talking about here, what the resolution speaks to. It doesn't speak to it at all. It doesn't address it. Nice speech. Great dream, and that's what it is. Nothing more at this point in time, from what I can see, and certainly from what's been done. But I do want to talk a little bit about the resolution myself. And Minister, Minister uh, speaks about encouraging Nova Scotia Power to sharpen their pencil. I would say, Mr. Speaker, that I would encourage them to dull it a little bit, maybe erase a little bit. Their, their pencil is more than sharp enough. They're already gouging Nova Scotians, and the government's standing by saying, this isn't our problem. So let's see, the government regulates the URB, but has no input in what the rates should be. 
That's the most confusing thing I've seen yet, Mr. Speaker, and they don't want to be involved. And this is a party now that promised a better deal for today's families. They say, we're going to go out and we're going to make life better. And they have done nothing anywhere near that. They've actually made decisions that are worse. They've walked away, walked away from the issue. Mr. Speaker, that's what they've done. They've walked away from it. Government has done nothing to offset the cost of energy in this province. They've, as I said, written a wonderful speech there, but it speaks zero to what we're talking about. The power bill, Mr. Speaker, and I'll table it. It's my power bill. I don't mind doing it when I'm uh, through making a couple of points here. They talk about um, the charges on this thing. You know, you look at uh, your cost of energy. So there's a section that's uh, your usage. Then there's a, uh, energy charges. There's a base charge of $10.83 in my bill for the month. Then there's another charge, energy efficiency programs of $9.25, and then of course the good old tax has to go on top of that before there's any kind of rebate given back. It never ends, Mr. Speaker, when people are trying to read their bill and they can't figure out and they're asking what's this for and what's that for. They have no idea what it's for. And here we see Nova Scotia Power today reporting, yet again, record profits, $63 million plus dollars. And where's that going, Mr. Speaker? Well. I think I read in the paper today about a wonderful project they're investing in now down in the United States or God knows where else, but they're not investing in Nova Scotia, Mr. Speaker, not even close. And I understand as well, the, uh, we certainly believe in business and profit. Uh, you have to be competitive and you have to be making money to stay in business, and I appreciate that very much. Uh, but there does come a limit uh, in time. But this, this is a monopoly, Mr. Speaker. This is not just a private business. I spoke before on this issue, and I'll say it again, I believe that competition is a good thing. And one of the ways that we're going to get rates down is to create competition. We have to get our hand involved in this. People expect their government to be involved in the regulation of the cost of energy. Now, on one hand, the minister writes a wonderful speech over there, and he talks about 2020, and he talks about the years ahead, and, and wind, and he talks about the wonderful power out there in the minus basin. And believe me, I know all about that. That's a great opportunity. There's uh, cutting greenhouse gas emissions. Those are all wonderful things, wonderful thoughts and projections. But there's no plan, or at least there appears to be no plan to make that happen. People also are of the opinion that green energy uh, may not be expensive. I think anybody who's really paying attention to it knows that green energy costs money. Uh, these initiatives cost a lot of money, actually, uh, to get started, to be involved. But the same old thing, when they see their money, their tax-paying dollars being invested in projects, it's one thing to invest in the projects and have this dream and want to do better, and there's nothing wrong with having a greener energy source, certainly one that would be more reasonable and maybe slow the increased rates that we're seeing by way of Nova Scotia Power. But Nova Scotia Power has a hand in it. We can't do anything without Nova Scotia Power having their hand in the pie. So tax-paying dollars are going in a roundabout way, call it how you want, but they appear to be going, at the very least, into Nova Scotia Power. But yet we have no control, the taxpayer, you and I, Mr. Speaker, the ratepayers, have no control over the rates in this province. But our taxpaying dollars are going to initiatives that they have a say in, that they are profiting on, Mr. Speaker. Talk about something being wrong, that's wrong. There has to be a better way of doing business, and it has to be around the regulation and the ability that government wants to be involved. They have to be involved, they have to have a say on behalf of the taxpayer when it comes to managing our money, if we're going to spend taxpaying dollars investing in these projects. Again, going down the green side is a good thing. Clean, green energy is fine. Nothing wrong with that. I'm okay with that. Um, and I think most people are excited about opportunities that we have in this province, Mr. Speaker, for moving in that direction. We want to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. There's no question about that. We want to have a good environment. We're talking about sustainability for our kids and our grandkids and beyond that, long after we're gone. Those are Great ideas, but you have to have a plan to be able to put them in place. And you can't do it uh, paying the kind of money that we are paying in this province to do it. You can't do it on the backs of, of every ratepayer and, and two or three, four times a year coming up with ideas and reading about how Nova Scotia Power needs more because we have guaranteed investments. I wish I could buy shares in Nova Scotia Power. Mr. Speaker, perhaps I guess maybe that'd be a conflict of interest. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> it would certainly be a conflict of interest, I guess, but... Um, um, it, the guaranteed investment, where can I get that? As the other member spoke to, what a great idea. 
um, we'd all be uh, doing very well. And you know, and then you look at rates going up, and it's not just the shareholders. You look at these guys who are, you know, the big wigs in these companies, the CEOs. They're not just making a few hundred thousand dollars. They're getting that in bonuses and more. We're talking millions of dollars a year going to salary on the backs of Nova Scotians. Because, oh, it's not good enough. We need a little rate. We gotta, we gotta live at this level way up here, Mr. Speaker. Forget about the gal I got in Windsor who's getting her power cut off today because she can't pay a bill because she lost her job. That doesn't matter. No worries. Don't matter. We'll cut her off. Somebody else will move into that apartment. We'll hook them up and we'll take their rate. No big deal. That's the appearance that people have. Now, I know that we negotiate with Nova Scotia Power on behalf of our constituents all the time. And I don't know about the rest of you members, but I know that I do it regularly, unfortunately. Too many times. And we're able sometimes to work things out and sometimes we're not, Mr. Speaker. And it's important that we try to get them worked out so they can live and have heat, power, and not heating their apartments with their oven on. You know, there's all kinds of things that are relative here, but um, we have to find a way. In Nova Scotia, the government has to step in and at some point say, all right, enough is enough. They talk about being arm's length, and I said it last week, great, cut the arm off and get involved. You know, is it taking it back in some way? That's okay. I think the people are anxiously waiting to see what government will do. If somebody has to stand up for the ratepayer and the everyday uh, Joe and Jane that's out there trying to work and make a living and survive with a family. We're not seeing that yet, Mr. Speaker. And this government promised that on the doorsteps when they were campaigning. And people are still waiting. And they're going to be waiting a good long time if nothing changes. Uh, a couple more years at least anyway. And I'm sure that they'll make up their minds then what they want to do and they'll reflect back when the time is right. But anyway, Mr. Speaker, um, I do support this motion. I think it is high time that we get involved and we do freeze the demand side piece of this. We do freeze uh, and regulate. If we're going to get into regulations, then we can craft the regulations a little different and say Nova Scotia Power can have an increase, sure, once every five years or whatever a figure might be. There's got to be a way to be involved that's fair to all concerned and uh, not on the backs of the Nova Scotia ratepayer, Mr. Speaker. And with that, uh, thank you very much. I'll take my seat. Thank you. I um, would like to thank all the members in the chamber tonight for an excellent debate. The motion for adjournment has been made earlier. The host will now rise and sit between the hours of 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. tomorrow, Wednesday, May the 4th.